Mark Jangizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about moral responsibility, mass hysteria, and things along these lines. And let me start off with something that may have fascinated you as a kid, or even still today, and it certainly fascinated me, and I was very naive about how I thought about it, and that's free will. As a kid, as a sort of a physics, mathy kind of uh, youngster, my thought about free will was quite stark, and it was just that Look, there's no free will, and so there's no moral responsibility, if you take that seriously, because either the world is deterministic, in which case you don't have free will, or there's randomness, some, you know, maybe quantum indeterminacy of some kind, in which case, well, that's also not free will of the kind that would matter. So there's, of course, no free will. And if there's no free will, then there's no moral responsibility, uh, at least in the normal sense that we like to think about it. Now, the problem with that is that it's true that the world is either deterministic or indeterminist, indeterministic, and neither of those is what one intuitively wants. This notion of a meta metaphysical free will is this other idea that we walk in the door with. It's, it's a false intuition, and that's that we have some ability to break out beyond determinism and beyond indeterminism to do something that we, our wills, freely decide to do. The problem with that is that it's just false. It's just That's not what we mean by moral responsibility. That's not what we mean by free will at all. And philosophers who are sort of compatibilists, they're called, uh, their job is in some sense, and I've never really spent too much time, is working out a philosophy, working out a kind of a, a psychological slash philosophical way of thinking about what moral responsibility can be such that we can understand what we mean when we actually say that someone has free will in this circumstance or doesn't in, in certain other circumstances and why they're moral, morally responsible in some circumstances and others. And it's, it's quite non-trivial, but it's not settled merely by saying, oh, well, there's no determinism. There's, it's either deterministic or there's indeterminism. And neither of those is free will. So the similar, sorts of thing, similar sort of thing happens in the case of mass hysteria and tyranny and things along these lines. And one thing that hopefully many of us have learned over the last 15 months, and many of us knew beforehand, but it's a really, I kind of knew it, but I really didn't think clearly as, as, as I do now about these things. Most tyrannies are not because of the charismatic evil dictator which pulls the strings and gets himself or herself into power. Instead, they usually ride along a wave of mass hysteria without which they would never have been able to, to achieve that level of power. I mean, for every dictator that finds him or herself in power, there's another 10,000 potential dictators out there that just can't possibly make that kind of thing happen because you can't make that kind of thing happen. It requires just the sorts of conditions that are viral sorts of conditions, so to speak, to make that kind of thing happen. And you can't control that. Which means that typically, and very often, one of the people who's involved in the mass hysteria is in some sense the dictator, him or herself. These folks are riding the wave, they're part of the wave. Now this doesn't mean, now so first reaction would be just like me as a kid saying, well there's no moral responsibility if you take this serious because there's no metaphysical free will. And so a first response in this case, well, well then you're saying that these people who, the journalists or the public policy folks or the academics who are part of the hysteria and ought not be, that they're thereby not culpable. Well, that's, not, that's no more true than saying there should be no moral responsibility just because there's no metaphysical free will in the sort of narrow sense that we might have thought. The notion of moral responsibility is much deeper and much more subtle than that. Of course, there's moral responsibility for the leaders and for journalists and for academics who are on the wrong side of tyranny when these sorts of things happen, but fleshing that out is more complicated. It's not the case that they, never, that, they, that they necessarily designed it. They weren't necessarily doing it on purpose. They even had, may have had good intent along the way, but they can still be culpable for being in a position, for example, that they were uh, susceptible to hysteria. The whole point of being a politician is that you should be above that. They could be still culpable for uh, covering their asses, you know, doing CYA along the way and shown that uh, trying to cover uh, uh, their steps along the way to show that things are working out as best, you know, make, you know, making things in good light when they're in fact there's a bad light. But even then, they're often doing it because they think that they're doing right. And again, that doesn't mean that they're not culpable. Um, lots of the things that go on around us are much more complicated than you understand than we typically understand. And to understand them requires much more subtle notions of responsibility. And it's not just simply evil dictator twiddling their their thumbs twiddling their mustaches, and you can only consider them morally responsible if they're in fact twiddling their, their mustaches. It's not like that all at all. 
And it doesn't mean when I point out that there's a lot of good intention out there, even amongst the side that is, has, is acting actually with evil, the individuals potentially are not personally evil, but they can still potentially be culpable. And um, don't, don't confuse the two. And that was your science moment.